Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be grinding a Toro DPA cutting unit. That doesn't mean it's right or wrong. I'm just going to show you how I do it. First thing I'm going to do is flip my reel up. And just to show you that it does need to be ground, um, you can almost hear it here because the noise it's making, it's not that crisp whisper. You know, it's tearing the paper here. We've all seen that before. Um, you know, so-so here in the middle, this end. Um, some of us would say, just give it another click, but we're gonna grind a reel. So the first thing I'm gonna do before I grind a reel is make sure this front roller is good on both sides, checking for any kind of play. I'm gonna check for any kind of run out in my rear roller. Then I'll also check the reel bearings, make sure they're good. And this is good practice to do anytime you're grinding a reel. And on a DPA, the first thing we're gonna do is loosen these nuts up on the back. 16 millimeter wrench. I'm gonna back off the reel to bed knife. Just one half turn, usually enough. And then I'm gonna remove the bed bar. When I turn my ratchet the right way. Righty tidy, lefty loosey. Don't forget. I've only been doing this 28 years and I still get confused left to right sometimes. But I love the quarter inch Milwaukee ratchet for removing this. Then when you pull your bed knife out, you got a metal washer and a plastic washer. On these older style DPAs, on the newer ones, it's just the plastic washer. All right, I'm gonna take my bed bar and knife assembly and set it to, set it to the side and we'll get that on another video. So the next thing I'm gonna do in this process is measure my reel diameter with a pie tape. <laughs> All right, so I'm, I'm placing my magnet in between the spiders here. I'm gonna tap, wrap this around the reel, pretty snug. So I know I'm at 0.8. I go back up here and we know that is 4.8. And we know the distance between this, the 0.8 line and the next line is 25 thousandths. So then we have to go to our veneer scale and see which line matches up the best. So now I'm gonna measure the real diameter on the trailing side, just to see if this reel has some cone in it. And it looks like it does. It's reading 4.795. So what that means is the leading side of the reel is a bigger diameter than the trailing side of the reel. So when I first start grinding, I know I'll be sparking on one side or the other, the biggest side of the reel. So that's why I always measure reel diameter before I put it in the grinder. Before I put the reel in the grinder, I need to confirm that the grinder is in the right position. And I'll show you how I do that. So in the Foley grinder, this arrow here, it points to a mark, and this is for five inch reels. And I'm grinding a five inch DPA cutting unit. So it's set on the correct mark. Then I added a ruler here so I know where to set various cutting units and I don't have to do the process every time because if we're grinding greens reels, I know my number, I have a reference chart up here and I know it's 6.1. So I just make sure that my front post is on 6.1, then I'm ready to throw the reel in. So now I'm gonna put the reel in the grinder and I made this bar it's uh, nothing special, it's 3-8 steel. 
so it'll hook up just like it would on the mower. The last person that used my hook messed up the clip. Didn't tell anybody. What? What are you thinking? That can be pretty frustrating. So I guess we'll fix that first. <laughs> or maybe we'll remove it. Because that ain't going to work. I'm going to get some pliers. A few moments later. And what do you know? Good as new. Not really. I'll just make sure my rear roller is gonna land in the V pallet there in the back. And then before I let the front down, sometimes you gotta adjust the front end or back out, depending on if it has groomers or something like that on it, you might have to adjust this plate. And since this one doesn't have groomers, I go all the way in with it and finish letting it down. So loosen this up, clamp it down on your rear roller, push the black knob down, and that locks the rear roller into the V-box. So now I'm gonna clamp the front roller You have to be careful on this. You don't want to push it in too far, you know, so it hits the reel. The other thing that I generally do is I try to line up the center spider on the reel with this post and the back of the grinder, and that helps get the reel centered. And if you notice, the center post will be offset to the left as we're looking at the cutting unit. So next thing I'm going to do is release my carriage and check my stops on both sides. On the foley, you want the grinding stone to come completely off of the reel, which is different from some other manufacturers. To set this side, I get the carriage where I want it and I move my proximity switch in from the left until the light comes on. And now I got my left proc set. And for this, sometimes it helps to get down at eye level where you can see where the end of the real blade is in the stone. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, starting on the right, sliding it in to the left till the light comes on. We got our proximity switches set up and we're gonna gauge off the shaft but before we get into the whole gauging process, I want to talk about the Toro and their datum on the reel shaft. And to do that, I'm going to use the gauge. So I'm going to use the gauge, put it on the, the bottom post, and I'm going to go to the reel shaft, and I want to be in the center of the reel shaft can be on these 14 bladed reels, it's kind of hard to see in there. And I don't remember exactly off the top of my head, but it's supposed to be within a couple thousandths, two or three thousandths concentric. And what I've found, it's not. And I just kind of wanted to walk through and show that. I have my gauge on the reel shaft and it's measuring 2.248. I'm gonna lower the gauge down and I'm going to turn the shaft 180 degrees and I'm just doing that by counting blades. One, two, three, four, five, six. So 14 bladed reel. I went seven blades. I should be pretty close to center and the reel shaft is measuring 251. This one's not too bad but I have seen them off more than that and that can be a uh, difficult when you're trying to set up and you're going to the left side and the right side and you're going back and forth. Every time you spin that around, that's changing. 
and we'll check the other side just to see where we're at on that. What I've been doing is I find the center point. So if it has eight thousandths run out, let's say it has ten thousandths run out, I'll try to find the five thousandths spot and I mark the reel. There's a yellow mark on the cutting unit side and there's a yellow mark on the reel itself. There's also a punch mark there that you probably, the camera's probably not gonna pick that up, but I put the punch mark and let, in case the paint goes away, I'll still have the punch mark there. And I do this the very first time I grind the reel and then that way every time I put this reel in the machine, it's just like timing marks on an engine. I turn it to this spot and this is where I gauge the shaft. So I'm gauging the center shaft of the reel in the same spot every time I grind the reel. We've gauged our left side, now we're gonna check our right side. So we brought the gauge up to the center shaft of the reel and it's reading 2.258, so it's 10 thousandths over right now. The bar verifies that I'm too low and I need to bring it up. It's flashing, telling me to turn it counterclockwise. So I'm gonna loosen the black handle, which locks the vertical adjustment. So I'm gonna turn this counterclockwise until my level comes up. My target is 232, so I'm gonna crank it until I get to 232. And if I make an adjustment like this, 10 thousandths, I'm gonna go back and gauge the left side again. Come back to my left side, gauge it. Now I'm reading 233 on this left side. I'm gonna hit the check box. Down with the gauge, back to the right. Now it's reading 227 on the right hand side. So I overshot, I went too far. And I've found this to be pretty common. That's why I go back and recheck. So now I'm gonna turn the knob clockwise and I'm actually gonna go below our target because when you're adjusting this, you want the carriage to always be coming up. So I went past where we need to go and I'm going back to 244. And I'm gonna check it one more time because I wanna make sure it's right. So now I'm at 242. Now I'm at 244. So we're walking it in, we're getting really close. I need to come up just four thousandths. And just to double check, I'm gonna go back to the left side. I'm not going back on the screen. I'm just going back with the gauge. Now I'm at, yeah, 240 on both sides. The key to this is I'm not spinning the reel shaft every time I'm going left and right. Um, real shaft stays in the same spot. So now it's time to go to the horizontal in and out here. We're gonna put it on the horizontal mount, lock it down, and then find the center of the reel shaft. So now we're to our horizontal position. We're reading 1.512. On our leading side, we're gonna to go to the trailing side and we're reading 513. So I wouldn't mess with this. I wouldn't adjust it. If you wanted to, you could, but three thousandths, not worried about it on the horizontal. I'm gonna hook up my drive motor to the reel. Just a half inch socket, half inch drive on the motor, direct drive. Snug up these two knobs, tighten this knob. 
So the setup process is critical on this and we're just aligning the carriage to the reel itself. And if we don't do that, it's gonna cause us a lot more trouble down the line with after cut appearance and potentially quality of cut issues. Um, so now the reel's set up and we're ready to grind. So we're gonna adjust the reel speed and I'm gonna show you how to do that using the barber pole effect. So I'm gonna turn the reel on, get it spinning, and then we're gonna watch for the lines in the reel. There'll be a black, darker line and you really need since we used to have for, for uh, we used to have fluorescent. Why can I not say fluorescent? Explain yourself. Um, we used to have fluorescent lights, and they flash at uh, 60 times a second, 60 hertz, and it almost worked like a timing light. Seeing these black lines revolve around the reel. Well, now that we went to LED, you don't see those black lines anymore. So you take your cell phone out with the camera or the video mode and point it towards the reel and look for the black line spinning. If the black line is moving up, you need to slow the reel speed down. If the black lines are rotating down, you speed the reel up. So I got the reel set up like we want it and we're going to go into manual grinding mode. We figured out our reel speed. I'm going to turn the machine on. Everything starts working. I'm going to move the traverse over to the left and then I'm going to stop it on the reel and I know that my the le as we're looking at it the left side of the reel should contact the stone first. So I'm actually gonna move the stone over towards the left side of the reel, then I'll infeed the stone until I start getting some sparks. So once I start getting some sparks, I traverse to the left, and I'm gonna come back to the right. And when we get to the right hand side of the reel, we should not be seeing any sparks if our setup's correct. So that's the whole reason for measuring the reel diameter before we ever put it in the machine. If we were sparking now, we would know something's wrong in our setup and we'd have to do that over again. And now we're ready to start a grinding program. And normally I just run a 1,000th removal and our reel speed is already set. This is what doing the barber pole, we figured out 238 was getting the rotation we wanted to get. You can change any of these parameters in here. I'm gonna go to 12 on this one. This reel's not that dull, so it's not gonna take a whole lot. I'm just gonna run the 1,000th program and I'll manually infeed as it's grinding. So I hit the check box. Start the program. It's going to automatically end feed one thousandths. And then if I want to end feed more, I can do it here. Ready to relief grind? I'm ready to relief grind. Let's do it. So the first thing to do is make sure our reel's sharp. So I'm just filling, filling the back side of the blade, making sure it's sharp. We can definitely tell we took off more material on the left side because our land width is thicker over here than it is on the right side. Something else I'm thinking about is this might be a good opportunity to measure, since our relief or our land area is different on this side versus that side, if we measured our real diameter right now, it probably is gonna be different than after we relief grind. I think it's gonna change. It's just a theory I got.
You want to try it out? Sure. Let's do it. Four point seven nine two. See what the other side is. Sixteen, I got four point seven nine one. So now let's do a relief and see what we get. Because our diameter shouldn't change just doing a relief. So to switch over to relief mode, first thing I'm gonna do is change my stone. And I'm going from a one inch wide stone to a three eighths inch. With a standard helix, which Toro, Deer, all those are standard helix, there's a slight bevel on this stone now. If it's a brand new stone, it don't matter what direction you put it on. If it's a used stone like this one, you want to put it on the grinding wheel so the angle is this way. It's kind of counterintuitive. This is a left-handed thread. When you tighten this up, just barely snug. You pull out this T-handle here, push it down. It's going to lock into place. And since we mainly, you know, we grind greens reels a lot and we relief them a lot. So this is pretty much set up and ready to go. We're just going to double check all our settings. So I just got the carriage out here away from the reel. So hopefully we can kind of zoom in on this and you can see what's happening. When the reel blade or when the carriage is on the right side of the reel as we're looking at it and the reel blade comes around it catches the index finger and then when you traverse to the left the reel blade ramps up on the guide and it travels across the guide when it gets to the other side the reel blade stops when it gets to this point where it just comes off the stone this has flipped forward, and then you traverse back to the right, and the real blade travels in between the guide and the finger. And then when it gets back to the other side, the blade comes around and catches the next blade. I'm going to enter or run my stone up. Too much. Go back down. And I just want to check. You just want just a little bit of play in the index finger. That might be a little too much. You adjust this to reduce it. And then I'm going to adjust my proc switch until it lights up. And my grinding stone's coming completely off the reel. And our index finger has flipped forward now. And when I slide back to the right, I just put a little pressure with my hand on the reel to keep some tension on the guide, just to make it traverse easier by hand. And then as soon as the stone comes off, then it catches the next reel blade. So I put the carriage where the stone just hits the real blade. And I'm gonna lock the carriage down. And now we're ready to relief grind. And just like spin grind, we're gonna start in the manual mode. So I'm gonna hit my torque. I don't know if hopefully the microphone picked up the little dunk you get when it turns on. So it's resting against the guide right now. I'm gonna turn on the stone, which also turns on the vacuum. And I'm gonna end feed the stone until I just see a couple sparks. Then I'm going to manually traverse 
the, the left. Just making sure that the stone comes off the reel, that index finger kicks forward. Now I'm going to go back to the right. If you grind going left and you don't grind coming right, more than likely your index finger is adjusted too tight. That was the play I was checking for. And now I'm ready to run a program. So we're gonna measure the reel diameter after we relief ground and see if it changed any. And if it did, it should have changed on this side, not necessarily that side, because that relief didn't get that much bigger. So we're at 4.7, 16, yeah. So maybe it changed a thousandths. And before it was 4.792 is what I measured on that side. I mean, I could be inconsistent in measurement that much. Um, yeah, it didn't, didn't change. It's uh, 4.791 on that side. So our reel is a true cylinder. Don't get any better than that. So our reel is ground and we're ready for a bed knife. And we're gonna do our bed knife video next and we'll release that at another time. I hope this video helps you. Until next time, see you bye.